Hello aspirants, welcome to UPSC World Current Affairs. Today is 11th March. Today's topics are a Northern River Terrapin. A few months back, a GPS tracker has been fixed on a Northern River Terrapin. We'll see what are the outcomes. We'll also discuss interesting facts about Northern River Terrapin. And another one is Deepak Dar has recently won a Boltzmann medal. We'll see who is Deepak Dar, why this medal is given and what are what is its importance. What are the conditions to get this medal? And um, Ivory Trade recently Namibia demanded or requested India's support uh, in uh, UN for uh, Ivory Trade in exchange for Cheetah's relocation. We will discuss what is Ivory Trade and Hansa New Generation. Uh, we'll discuss a new aircraft that has been uh, recently launched. Uh, predatory pricing. Uh, recently, Supreme Court dismissed a plea uh, on uh, Shopee. We'll discuss what is uh, predatory pricing. No fly zone. Uh, Ukraine has requested NATO to impose no fly zone in Ukraine. And we'll discuss what is no fly zone and why you, you, NATO has re, uh, rejected its request. And what are human, humanitarian corridors and why these are important in the context of Russia-Ukraine war. Slinex is uh, recently 9th edition of uh, Slinex has been recently conducted in Vishakhapatnam. We'll see what is Slinex, what is this exercise about. And um, recently ex-managing ex, uh, director of NS, NSC has been arrested. We'll see what is the importance of NSC, what are the basic facts about National Stock Exchange. And uh, recently a democracy report 2022 has been released and we'll see what are its key highlights and um, yeah, we'll get into today's topics. Northern River Terrapin. Why it is in news? Recently, a few weeks back, forest officials installed GPS transmitters on Northern River Terrapins in just a few weeks where they installed in Indian Sundarbans in just a few weeks. After the release, at least 3 out of 10 turtles have traveled hundreds of kilometers and they are now in Bangladesh. So we'll see basic information about Northern River Terrapins. This sign, uh, scientific name of these uh, turtles is Batagur Bhaska. And uh, what is a Northern River Terrapin? It is a species of a riverine turtle. It is native to Southeast Asia. It is one of Asia's largest freshwater and breakwater turtle what are breakwaters breakwaters is basically a wall i mean it's a wall uh, which extends in a in a sea um, it's it is usually built to protect a harbor or beach from a waves you can see in um, in few beaches there is a wall which which extends which uh, uh, crushes into the sea right that is breakwater it is one of Asia's largest freshwater and breakwater turtles. It can reach it can reach a carapace length up to 60 centimeters. What is carapace? This this area, the outer shell of the turtle is called carapace, and it can reach maximum weight of 18 kgs. Its carapace is moderately depressed. That means it will be somewhat smooth. It is currently found in which countries? Uh, they are uh, native to Southeast Asia, so we can eliminate all the other things. They are currently found in Bangladesh and India, in especially in Sundarbans. They are also found in Cambodia, Indonesia and Malaysia. What is the conservation status of Northern River Terrapin? Its conservation uh, status according to IUCN Red List is it is critically endangered. What are the major threats is it is exploited for a food including egg harvesting they'll harvest eggs of northern river terrapin so what are the important points it's a scientific name um, batagur baska it is where it is native to it is native in southeast asia and it is asia's largest freshwater and breakwater turtle these are the important point and where we can find in which countries we can find this and uh, what is its conservation status these are important points in this topic Deepak Dar and Boltzmann medal. So Deepak Dar, the physicist from the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research Pune has been selected for the Boltzmann medal. So who is this Deepak Dar? He is the first Indian to win this award. He shares this award with American scientist John J. Hopfield. 
जॉन जे हॉपफील्ड इज नोन फॉर हिज इन्वेंशन ऑफ एन असोसिएटिव न्यूरल नेटवर्क इट इज नाउ नेम्ड आफ्टर जॉन जे हॉपफील्ड एंड वाई ही गॉट दीपक दौर गॉट दिस मेडल इज ही इज फॉर हिज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन द फील्ड ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिकल फिजिक्स फॉर ऑल दिस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स ही he gave definition of a spectral dimensions of fractals universal long time relaxation and discarded magnetic systems exact solutions in percolation and cluster counting problems so we'll discuss what are the basic information about a boltzmann medal it is an award given uh, for the outstanding contributions outstanding uh, achievements in the field of statistical physics this is very important statistics physics statistical physics and boltzmann medal so it is named after a physicist ludwig boltzmann the award is initiated in the year 1975 the first recipient is kg wilson he, he is also a nobel laureate he got nobel prize for physics in 1982 so uh, this award is given to one or person one or two persons once in every 3 years this is important point and what are the conditions to get this medal uh, it should be given only once to a person this person cannot again get uh, this medal and this um, the person who is receiving boltzmann should not have won nobel prize before they can get nobel prize after winning boltzmann like kg wilson kg wilson first received his Boltzmann medal in 1975 and then he received 1982 Nobel prize so before uh, winning nobel prize you should have won boltzmann medal so it is basically awarded by who commission on statistical physics of the iupap international union of pure and applied physics so what are the important points or uh, base important necessary points uh, for uh, mcqs for the, in the exam he is the first um, deepak dar is the first indian to win this award and uh, boltzmann medal is basically uh, given in the fields of statistical physics and it is given once in a year and very important is only once per a person and he should not have won nobel prize before and it is award given by commission on statistical physics uh, physics of IUPAP these are the important points in this topic ivory trade why it is in news a uh, few days back we have discussed a chita relocation a uh, current affairs you might have remember if you are new to this channel i have discussed about chita and its relocation in india and uh, why it is in news and uh, we have also discussed that translocations uh, we are uh, targeting namibia and south africa for translocation of cheetahs for importing cheetahs so uh, as india requested namibia for its cheetah relocation namibia demanded or wants india's support for what for for lifting a united nations ban on commercial trade of wildlife products including ivory so what basically did means so it uh, in written it gave it asked like united nations already banned the commercial trade of wildlife products few years back so uh, in order to lift this ba ban uh, namibia sub uh, wants india's support so uh, what is ivory trade it is a commercial uh, it is an illegal trade in the ivory tusks of walrus walrus african and asian elephants walrus is basically a marine map so uh, ivory trade is banned in when in 1989 under cites united nations cites of wild fauna and flora what is cites convention on international trade in endangered species so uh, why they usually trade these ivory means it is used for making luxury goods and medicinal purposes this is a uh, tusks these kind of things and are all ivory so important points are uh, ivory trade they give illegal trade illegal uh, it is illegal or not it is banned under which thing it is banned under cites this this is important and um, from which country demanded like it is namibia hansa ng so what is hansa ng why it is in news uh, india it is india's first indigenous flying trainer hansa ng has successfully completed the sea level trials at 
trials at puducherry we'll discuss basic information about hansa new generation it is india's first indigenous aircraft trainer so it is a uh, revamped or uh, renovated or versions of original hansa it was developed 30 years ago it is basically designed and developed by national aerospace laboratory bangalore it is under cisr under the aegis of control council of scientific and industrial research cisr it is uh, hansa ng is one of the most advanced flying trainers it is powered by rotax digital control engine it is basically the ng hansa ng is basically designed to meet indian flying club needs it is an ideal aircraft for commercial pilot licensing in order to take a license commercial pilot this is the very ideal aircraft why it is uh, very low cost and low fuel consumption this this is very important point and what are the key features it is uh, it's comp it's composite lightweight airframe what is airframe it is basically airframe is uh, body of the aircraft uh, in excluding engines and instruments this is the body of aircraft excluding engines and all it's basically our lightweight thing and a glass cockpit what is glass cockpit means cockpit is a compartment of pilot where pilot sits it, it is fully glass and bubble canopy with wide panoramic view what is canopy canopy is basically roof so we can see um, 360 degrees uh, from this canopy an electrically operated flap a flap is is basically a wing this is con- completely electrically operated these are the important features uh, in the new generation hansa so what are the basic uh, information it is designed and developed by national aerospace laboratory bangalore under the aegis of cisr and uh, it is ideal uh, for commercial pilot licensing why uh, they ask like uh, high cost or uh, low cost it's low fuel consumption and it, it is india's first indigenous aircraft trainer so they'll also give few uh, futures and we have to select the correct option predatory pricing what is predatory pricing why it is in news um recently uh, cci competition commission of india has dismissed allegations of predatory pricing against the e-commerce platform shopee arguing that shopee did not hold a significant market power as it is relatively new entrant in the market with ls with well established players so vertically uh, so basically what happened means uh, some allegations going uh, going on around um, shopee that it is doing predatory pricing Uh, so uh, what is predatory pricing why it is uh, important so predatory pricing it is illegal act of uh, putting low prices to attempt to eliminate the competition so uh, how uh, how can we say a company is doing predatory pricing means the company should be a dominant player in the market like jio its goods or services are uh, wantedly being below cost and they are using some tactics Uh, with an intention to eliminate competition if they are doing uh, doing these kind of things they are considered as doing predatory pricing this is uh, violating antitrust laws at it as it makes markets more vulnerable to monopoly so what is monopoly it is a one company if one company is the only provider of a service in the area that is monopoly so what are uh, what are covered under indian law under the indian jurisprudence predatory pricing is described as unfair or discriminatory pricing it is forbidden by a law under section 4 of competition act 2002 which refers to the abuse of dominant position so what are the do- drawbacks um are they defendants may easily argue that lower pricing is um, is not a is not a is not part of uh, attempting to undermine the market it is a normal competition rather than a deliberate thing they can easily escape from this so uh, what are the important points in this topic that may will get in uh, in exam means um, uh, the conditions they'll give few conditions and which of the following is not in the conditions this is very important this is Ill, whether it is illegal or not this is also very important uh, 
and in under indian jurisprudence whether it is legal or not it under indian jurisprudence it is unfair and discriminatory no fly zone uh, what is no fly zone why it is in news ukrainian government's call to impose a no fly zone over ukraine has been rejected by nato why on account of risking further escalations and direct military confrontation with russia so what just happened means um, Ukrainian president Zelensky requested U uh, NATO to impose no fly zone over uh, Ukraine so that what happens if NATO imposes no fly zone over Ukraine we'll discuss in a moment this has been rejected this request by Zelensky has been rejected by NATO why uh, it it means if uh, Russia's Russia opposes that thing means it will be direct war between NATO power and Um, Russia so that is why in order to not escalate further and uh, direct military con confrontation with Russia uh, NATO has rejected no fly zone over Ukraine so what is no fly zone basically it is a um, if a territory or area established by a military power over which certain aircraft or not permitted to fly certain aircrafts are not permitted in in particular area which has established by military power like nato it is also known as air exclusion zone so in military context it is to stop aircraft from entering banned space usually to prevent attacks or surveillance in civilian context also it is to protect sensitive locations like for example olympics games they uh, they prevent they put some no fly zones to to prevent the terrorist air attacks are there any past no fly zones yes there are uh, in iraq 1991 gulf war uh, it was this no fly zone was established by united states along with other coalition nations bosnia and herzegovina uh, during 1995 kosovo war um, by whom by nato it was resolution passed by united nations security council and it is monitored by nato libya uh, during 2011 civil war it is approved by united nations security council and monitored by nato so uh, important points means um, they'll basically ask about no fly zones they'll uh, where they'll give some uh, situation like we have to choose the correct options to stop aircraft from entering banned space certain aircrafts are not permitted to fly so this is these are the important points in this topic humanitarian corridors what are humanitarian corridors why it is in news we'll discuss uh, in a moment so why it is in news united nations consider humanitarian um, corridors to be one of several possible forms of temporary pause of armed conflict so what are humanitarian corridors they are demilitarized zones so what is a demilitarizing means all military forces are removed in a particular area that is demilitarized de zone so it is basically in a specific area and for a particular time uh, this happens only when both sides of an armed conflict agree to them both russia and ukraine has to agree for a specific humanitarian corridor so what is the need of uh, humanitarian corridors civilians can be evacuated during this uh, pause of during the ceasefire Uh, food medical aid and other necessary items can also be supplied to the cities which is under siege um, what is the another need it is extremely important because it, usually during the war people are cut off from basic food supplies electricity and water in this situations humanitarian corridors which supplies food medical aid uh, this is very important so who will set up humanitarian corridors in most cases it is set up by uh, united nations but sometimes they are also set up by local groups but whatever the case the both uh, sides of an armed conflict should agree to the humanitarian co corridors so what are the main drawbacks uh, there is a risk of military or political abuse as these are uh, agreed by both sides there will be a risk of military or political abuse like the corridors can be used for smuggling weapons and fuel inside besieged cities so uh, they can also be used by un observers ngos and journalists to gain access to the contested area where war crimes are being committed 
Linux. What is Linux? Why it is in use? Recently, ninth edition of bilateral maritime exercise Linux has been held at Vishakhapatnam from March 8th to yesterday 10th. So about Linux. So Linux is basically bilateral maritime exercise between Indian Navy and Sri Lankan Navy. And what is its main aim is to increase mutual understanding and interoperability means coordination and uh, it is basically the exchange of its main is to exchange the best procedure and practice for multifaceted maritime operations between the two navies. It is in line with Indian neighborhood first policy and it is also in line with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision of Sagar security and growth for all in the region. So what is main important point bilateral maritime access between bilateral means between two countries between what are the two countries means Indian Navy and Sri Lankan Navy. Yes, L means Sri Lanka, IN means India, EX means exercise, Sri Lanka, Indian Navy exercise. So what is its aim? It is mutual understanding and property. These are the important things. Indian neighborhood first policy and Sagar thing. National Stock Exchange, why it is in news? Recently, CBI arrested Chitra Ramakrishna. She is the former managing director of NSC. Why? To probe the granting preferential access of market data to a stock, stock broker ahead of others. So what is National Stock Exchange? We'll discuss basic information about this. This is the leading stock exchange. So what is stock exchange? It is a market in which securities are bought and sold. It is a national stock exchange is located in Mumbai, Maharashtra. It is established in the year 1992. Uh, and also it is the first dematerialized electronic exchange in the country. So what is dematerializing means physical uh, certificates will be converted to electronics, electrical. So this is the first dematerialized electronic exchange in the country. It is basically under the ownership of so it is not under the government but the probe will be by SEBI if anything wrong. So it is under the ownership of some leading financial institutions, banks and insurance companies. So who are uh, the investors in the, in the NSC means uh, SBI, LSE and all are investors in NSC. So it is the first exchange in the country to provide a modern fully automated screen based electronic trading systems that offers easy trading facilities to investors of the country. It is the world's largest derivative exchange for the third consecu consecutive year in 2021. So what are derivatives? Derivatives is basically a contract between two or more parties um, by uh, uh, how it got world's number uh, largest derivative exchange by number of contract it got it is traded on this platform uh, and it is based on securities ma statistics managed by FIA it is a derivatives trade body. So what are the important points it is the leading stock exchange it is located in Mumbai and it is established in 1992 it is not under the government uh, it is not under any ministry it is basically owned by these financial institutions. It is the first exchange to provide these kind of features and it is the first dematerialized electronic exchange. This is very important point and it is also world's largest derivative exchange. These two are important points. Democracy report 2022. Why it is in use? The latest edition of democracy report was recently released by Wiedem Institute at Sweden's University of Gothenburg about democracy report. So the report classifies countries uh, into four types of regimes uh, based on their score in their liberal democratic index. So basically uh, the score will be in index liberal democratic index and it's, uh, it classifies countries into four types of regimes. These are liberal democracy, electoral democracy, uh, electoral autocracy, closed autocracy. So liberal means giving uh, freedom of speeches, some media things and all. And electoral democracy means free and fair elections. So it classifies India as electoral autocracy, not democracy. As India is world's largest democracy, uh, these West people cannot digest these kind of things. They'll uh, place India as an electoral autocracy, as if we are really uh, we are getting ruled under mo monopoly. So uh, they classified India as electoral autocracy they ranked India in the position 93rd 
so out of 179 countries so what according to this report more than twice are going towards autocratization than democratization 15 are going towards democratization 32 are going towards autocratization according to this report india is one among 10 autocratizers uh, autocratizers in the world sweden topped the list because it is released by sweden so what is basically autocracy means it is a system of government in which absolute power over a state is concentrated in the hands of one person india is definitely not autocracy by this 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 definition but the persons who are sitting in sweden can decide who we are so and this is basically private uh, report this is not uh, we should not take care of this report very seriously just for a cognizance we should uh, just have a grasp about what they are thinking about us they'll um, they'll take every chance to bully us they'll uh, take uh, every uh, situations to make us down so what is dem democracy it is a form of government in which people have the authority to deliberate and decide the legislations it is direct democracy and choose government officials to do so usa india and all indirect democracy that means we uh, choose government uh, representatives they will choose the head of the nations head of the state so this is not that much important uh, if they ask democracy report it will be removed uh, released by vdm institute of uh, the sweden's university of Gothenburg. that's that's it so today's question of the day with reference with reference to boltzmann medal consider the following statements it is the award for outstanding achievements in the field of optics and acoustics statement 2 it is given only once to a person and on the condition that that person has not won the nobel prize so far we have discussed it in the starting of this video please write the correct options in the um, comment section below even if it is wrong also please try it and um, by this way you can uh, remember this for a long term long time uh, so please participate in the comment section so that video will also get boost. Uh, thank you for uh, watching guys. Follow us on social media. If you have to come to this far, you might have liked this video. Please give thumbs up in, uh, 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 under this video. And also post comments in, if you have any doubts. I will try to clarify in my level best. And also I will post a beautifully designed uh, current affairs summary posters in Instagram and Facebook. Please follow us on instagram and facebook and i'll also give um, current affairs summary in telegram channel please uh, join us i have given all the links in the description below please go check out and um, mainly the all these topics will be in a pdf format in the link in the description below please click to download it is free of cost you can uh, make notes out of it or use this current uh, use this pdf like that and it will be very useful in the quick revision Thank you for watching guys. Please share this video with your fellow aspirants and we will see you tomorrow.